Dear friends, welcome to the Redemptress Media Center and to our new podcast series, Redemptress Homilies on the Go, a series of reflections on the Word of God, led by Redemptress missionaries. In December 2020, in the midst of the global COVID-19 pandemic, when church buildings remain closed to the public, with no opportunities to go out shopping, to have family gatherings and the news of suffering and death all around, could Christmas really be Christmas? Perhaps now we could really focus on the spiritual meaning of Christmas. In this context, the Redemptress Media Center brought the hope of the two comings of the Lord to every home in the first ever online Advent mission. This is a series of seven mission sermons on the Word of God to bring courage, hope and renewal to your family. Are you fighting a losing battle against certain bad habits? Do you find that some compulsive behavior of yours often leads to broken relationships within the family or elsewhere? It could be a sign that you may have become a victim of sin. In this podcast, Father Shiju Mulaseril, CSSR, helps us to understand why we are attracted by sin. He shares the good news that God does not condemn us, but that because God loves us, God desires to set us free from our bondage to sin. Father Shiju Munaseril CSSR is a current Dean of Studies and Lecturer of Church History at Mount St. Alphonsus Redemptorist Theologate in Bangalore. He was a former Provincial Council member in the Ligori Province of Redemptorist. He is much admired for his deep reflections on the Word of God and well-researched and balanced perspective on the history of the Church. Listen in even as you go about your daily activities and be transformed by the Word of Life. This mission sermon originally premiered on 7 December 2020. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. While Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test him so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, Where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, to not sin again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, there is a story told about a sage who wanted to teach a very important lesson to his proud and arrogant disciple. The sage who was good in archery took his disciple to a nearby mountain And there they saw a big tree with a beautiful flower. Now the sage asked his disciple to cover his eyes with a handkerchief. And the disciple covered the eyes of the sage with the handkerchief. 
And then the sage took out his bow and placed an arrow on it and then released that arrow with all his energy aiming at the flower on that tree. But the arrow did not strike that flower. It missed the mark by a large distance. The disciple was very disappointed because he was ready to witness the magical skill of his master. The master told him gently, my dear son, I have brought you here to teach you a very important lesson that you cannot hit a target when you are blind. You cannot hit a target that you cannot see. Yes, my dear friends, it is very true of our spiritual life. We cannot reach the target of our spiritual life if our spiritual eyes are blinded by sin. The very word in Greek for sin is hamartia, which means to miss the mark, to miss the target, to lose one's mission. As Christians, we have a definite mission. We have a definite target. We have a definite aim. And therefore, sin simply means losing that mark, losing that target in our Christian life, losing that mission and aim of our Christian life. For example, a husband who has promised to love his wife on the wedding day for the rest of his life leaves her and lives with another woman. In this case, he has missed the mark. He has missed the target. He has lost the aim of his life. A priest or a religious who doesn't live or her commitment properly misses the mark. Similarly, children who do not look after their parents and parents who do not consider their children as, the, as gifts of God truly miss the mark. They lose the aim and mission of their life. In the book of Genesis, my dear friends, we see Adam and Eve losing the target of their life, missing the mark of their life, the mission of their life. In the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 6, we read, when the woman saw the fruit, that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to her eyes, and that it was desired to be, it was to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit of it and yet, and gave some to her husband. Instead of looking at the face of God, she looked at that forbidden fruit because she thought that this fruit would make her wise. This fruit was good for food and this fruit was delight to her eyes. In other words, it was attractive, it was enjoyable. And my dear friends, this teaches us a very important lesson. Although we say sin is so ugly, sin is very attractive. Sin is very enjoyable. Sin gives us pleasure. Every sin is associated with a great amount of pleasure. Who likes sin? None of us like sin. We don't like to commit sin. What we like is the attraction that comes with sin. What we like is the enjoyment that comes with sin. What we like is the pleasure that the sin gives us. Let us think about the sins that we commit frequently, repeatedly. Many times we make decisions, resolutions, 
to abstain from them, to refrain from them. We are, but we are not simply able to do that. We are not able to exercise that determination, that resolution, that decision. We are not simply able to give up the pleasure that sin gives to us. We are not able to say no to the attraction of sin. We are not able to say no to the enjoyment that sin gives us. We are not able to say to the pleasure that sin gives us. And that's what happened to Adam and Eve. They were unable to say no to the attraction of sin, the enjoyment that sin could give, the pleasure that sin could give. It is said, one of the greatest gifts of God to us to say no to certain things. And sin leaves us incapable of saying no to those things that really destroy us. My dear brothers and sisters, in the first letter of St. John, chapter 3, verse 4, we read, Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. And then we must ask the question, what is the law? And we get the answer in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 37 and 38. Jesus says, you must love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You must love your neighbor as yourself. And therefore, the law is to love God and love our neighbor. And anything that we commit against the love of God is sin. Anything that we commit against the love of our neighbor is sin. Anything that we commit against the image and likeness of God is sin. We are all created in the image and likeness of God. And therefore, anything that we commit against ourselves is sin. The nature, the creation reflects the glory of God, the image of God. And anything that we commit against the nature, against the creation of God, is sin. My dear friends, St. Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, gives us a list of sins which we commit when we lose this target, when we lose this mission, when we lose this mark in our Christian life. St. Paul says, Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. And then St. Paul goes on saying, all those who do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. St. Paul is very clear about what he says. According to St. Paul, these sins destroy every goodness in us. Today, many people are addicted to many sins, especially the sin of pornography. The evil one is attracting many people to himself under this form of sin. It is said, the satanic possession that the present gener generation experiences the sin of pornography. This sin has destroyed many people. It has destroyed children. It has destroyed young people. It has destroyed all the ones. It has destroyed families. It destroys every goodness in us. St. Augustine tells us why we commit sin. According to St. Augustine, 
There are two things behind every sin. First of all, he says, the evil one makes us believe that God is not always trustworthy. Satan is also at times true. And that's what Adam and Eve believed. The evil one made them believe that God is not always trustworthy. The evil one said to Adam and Eve that God told you not to eat that forbidden fruit because if you ate, you would become like God. God didn't want you to become like him. And therefore, you don't have to do everything as God says. At times, we are also tempted to think that way. It is not possible to do everything as God says. We might say, we cannot do everything as the church says. It is too much. How can we live without the attraction of the world? The evil one always makes us believe that God is not always trustworthy. And he is at times true. That's what he makes us believe. Secondly, my dear friends, the evil one makes us believe that there is no point in looking for heaven by rejecting the joys of this world, the pleasures of this world. The Bible says, if you do this, if you do that, you will go to heaven. Or if you don't do that, if you don't do this, you will go to heaven. The church also says something similar. Today, many people tend to say, we don't want that heaven. We don't want that eternal life which the Bible offers to us. We don't want that heavenly life which the church offers to us. We are not bothered about what the church says. We are not bothered about what God says. We are not bothered about what the Bible says. We want to enjoy our life in this world. We want to eat, drink, and make merry. The evil one always tries to tell us there is no point in looking for heaven by rejecting the joys of this world, the pleasures of this world. And therefore, St. Augustine says, these two things are at the backdrop of every sin. Yes, my dear friends, the question now we need to ask ourselves is, what does sin do to us? First of all, sin enslaves us. Sin makes us slaves. In the book of Genesis, when Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, their eyes were opened and they became aware of their nakedness. In the Bible, nakedness is the symbol of slavery. We see when the people of God sinned against God, they were taken into exile. They were slaves. St. John in his gospel tells us, everyone who sins is a slave of sin. Who is a slave, my dear friends? A slave is a person who serves the will of his or her master. As a slave of sin indicates that a person is obligated to serve the will of sin. And that person doesn't have any power to leave the master of sin on his own or on her own. And therefore, that person is fully controlled by sin by the evil one. Yes, my dear friends, this is what happens when we are enslaved by sin. We lose our control. We lose our freedom to choose. We lose our common sense. We lose our inner energy, inner strength. Our spiritual eyes become blind and we lose the inner joy and happiness. Secondly, my dear friends, 
when we sin we cannot be in the presence of the lord adam and eve heard the sound of god walking in the garden at the evening breeze and what did they do when they heard god walking in the garden they went and hid themselves because they were afraid of god they were afraid to be in the presence of the lord they could not go before the lord until they committed that sin against god they used to walk with god holding his hands now they are afraid as my dear friends this is what happens when we are under the influence of sin we cannot be in the presence of god we become frightened we become afraid we cannot go before god and we lose interest in spiritual as well as divine things we lose interest in prayer life we neglect our spiritual life we find no meaning in going to the church in participating in the mass we neglect our sacramental life because sin leaves us incapable of being in the presence of the lord we lose that closeness with god and god becomes a distant reality in our life thirdly my dear friends when we sin we cannot be in the presence of our brothers and sisters in the bible the first sin is against god in this the second sin is against brother the second sin is a sin against brother one's own brother cain killed abel as my dear friends when we are not in the presence of the low presence of our brothers and sisters we break our relationship with them instead of having good relationship we will begin to have broken relationship with them we will break our relationship with our parents our spouses children neighbors coworkers and so on our parents will become a nuisance for us a pest to be avoided they will become a burden for us we will disrespect women and children we will abuse them the children of the same family become dead enemies we will lose a sense of responsibility towards our brothers and sisters sin makes us lose a sense of justice towards them individualism egoism selfishness self-centeredness pride greed and arrogance will become part of us and these attitudes will create and perpetuate social evils like poverty social injustice discrimination and corruption or we support the structures that create and perpetuate these social evils we begin to exploit the poor we will begin to treat them badly we will not pay the just and fair wage to those who work for us and we will also exploit the nature for our own advantages without considering that it is the gift of god and fourthly my dear friends sin leaves us unproductive and unfruitful god said to cain curse is the earth because of you in toil you shall eat all the days of your life thistles and thorns you shall bring forth in other words god was telling cain your effort your hard work will not be fruitful will not be productive there is a beautiful incident in the book of joshua chapter 7 we read about israelites being defeated by the people of the city of ai 
Before the Israelites attacked the, this small city of Ai, Joshua sent spies to spy out Ai. And the spies came back and reported to them that only 2,000 or 3,000 people should be sufficient to attack that city. And 3,000 people were sent to attack the city of Ai. But the Israelites were miserably defeated. And they were very sad. Joshua made a plea to God. God, why did it happen? We have been successful so far. We have been winning the battle so far. We have been victorious. How could this happen to us? And God revealed to them there was sin in the camp. And because of this, the Israelites could not stand before their enemy. And what was the sin of the Israelites? One of them called Akan kept to himself some forbidden things, some devoted things without destroying them. And because of this sin, the Israelites stopped being successful. They stopped being victorious. Until then, they were going from victory to victory, success to success. But their sin defeated them, even though the enemy was a small one. Something similar happened to King David. King David was also going from victory to victory, success to success. But from the time he committed the sins of adultery and murder, he stopped being victorious. He stopped being successful. He stopped being unfruitful, stopped being fruitful and productive. Now the question that we need to ask ourselves, were the Israelites defeated because God punished them? Was David defeated because God punished them? The answer is no. It was not because of the punishment of God. Their sin weakened them. Their sin took away the inner energy, the inner strength. The sin took away their confidence and courage, their concentration and creativity. And sin left them vulnerable before their enemies. As my dear friends, this is what happens to each one of us when we sin. Our inner energy will be lost. Sin takes away our inner strength, our confidence, our concentration, our creativity, and sin leaves us vulnerable before the enemy. As there is death in poison, so also there is death in every sin. Every sin is self-destructive. Every sin is capable of destroying the sinner. And that is why St. Paul in his letter to the Romans say very, says very clearly that the wage of sin is death because sin is self-destructive. Sin destroys every sinner. But we don't need to be afraid. We don't need to be frightened of when the Israelites turned back from their sins and turned toward God, they once again became successful, fruitful, productive, and victorious. When King David confessed his sins, he also once again became successful and victorious in his life. No matter what our sins are, God can still save us. No matter what our sins are, God can still make us victorious. And that is why God sent his only son into this world to liberate us from the slavery of sin, to save us from the clutches of sin with his precious blood. There is a beautiful story told by St. Augustine. He explains to us why God sent his only son into the world? Why God became a human being? Why he suffered? Why he rose again? St. Augustine says, 
in a story form one day god asked the devil release all those people whom you have enslaved release my people whom you have enslaved and satan said to him i will release them to you i don't want this impoverished people i don't want this weak people i will sell them to you provided you pay sufficient price god asked him what would you expect and satan said i will sell your impoverished weak people back to you if you pay with the blood and life of your only begotten son jesus and god agreed and god sent his son to save us from the slavery of satan it is said because of the weight of our sin the sweat of jesus turned into drops of blood with his blood he has saved us he has come to fill us with his mercy he has come to fill us with his love and compassion he has come to call us to the light from darkness as my dear friends our god is so compassionate our god is so loving our god is so merciful the scripture reading we just listened to helps us to reflect on the compassion love and forgiveness of god there is one detail that intrigues many people why did jesus write with his finger on the ground and what did he write some say when jesus wrote on the ground each one saw his or her sins revealed there others say jesus was just doodling to distract the audience or to buy time and yet others say he was simply refusing to answer the question a reflection by john shea on this passage indicates a possible explanation jesus wrote twice with his finger we all write with pens and quills but god writes with his fingers and we see it in the book of exodus in the book of exodus we see god writing the 10 commandments with his fingers and giving to moses on the mount sinai and soon after this when moses was coming down the mountain he saw the people celebrating and worshiping a golden calf and it was idolatry and in the language of the bible it was also adultery because israel has turned away from their bridegroom yahweh with whom there was a covenant they have now turned against a strange god and moses was so consumed with anger and he threw these tablets of stone at them and then he went back to god to plead to god on behalf of the people and to encounter god and when he encountered god a second time god god revealed himself as the lord the lord a god gracious and merciful slow to anger abound in steadfast love and faithfulness showing steadfast love and faithfulness towards thousandth generation forgiving iniquity sin and transgression this was the experience of moses and then god wrote the 10 commandments with his finger on the tablets of stone and gave to moses a second time and between these two writings moses had the experience of a compassionate god a god who was aware that sin had infected all the generations of mankind but who continue, still continued to show mercy towards his people as my dear friends jesus also wrote twice on the ground jesus was indicating the possible 
the true explanation, the true interpretation of Moses must be found not in the action of throwing stone, but in the discovery of the compassion of God. The people who brought that woman, who dragged that woman, experienced a kind of thrill that came from the power to condemn. But Jesus knew the indescribable joy that came from forgiveness. He knew about the possibility of beginning again. The adulterous woman was not condemned. She was forgiven. But the tragedy was that all those who were guilty went away carrying the burden of sin without listening and hearing the liberative words of Jesus. What does this story teach us, us my dear friends? This story gives us two messages. First of all, we must not look for a splendor in the eyes of others when we have a log in our own eyes. Secondly, when we become aware of our sinfulness, we must throw ourselves into the forgiving arms of Jesus because there is no sin beyond the mercy of God. There is no sin beyond the compassion of God. There is no sin beyond the forgiveness of God. There is no sin beyond the love of God. Jesus did not tell that woman that all was right. He said all was wrong. You have sinned. But at the same time, Jesus saw the possibility of a saint in him. Jesus said to her, Sin no more, go in peace. As my dear friends, Jesus is a forgiving Lord. He is a loving Lord. He is a merciful Lord. Tonight, Jesus gives us the same message. He tells us, go in peace, sin no more. Let us experience the joy of his forgiveness. Let us experience the joy of his compassion. Let us experience the joy of his forgiveness. He has destroyed the power of death. He has destroyed the power of sin with his blood. And therefore, let us experience that joy of forgiveness which Jesus, only Jesus can give us so that we may be able to celebrate the birth of Christ joyfully and with happiness. Amen. We do hope you enjoyed this podcast. Catch our other Redemptorist homilies on the go either on our RMC YouTube channel or from wherever you listen to podcasts. God bless you all mightily.